Hello you guys, I'm Randall Beach. I'm the director of the marching band at SVU and I've had the chance to meet most of you either on the phone or through Zoom or FaceTime calls and I'm super excited to have you involved with the percussion section of the marching band. Uh, I'm excited to be here. I love drumline. It's my thing. It's my specialty and I'm telling you we're going to create a real drumline, a legit drumline here at SVU. The fact that you're going to be here and be a part of this and start with me to build this thing is going to be really cool. So I hope you're excited. Uh, as we work together, you're going to get to know me and uh, my philosophies with drumming and how I organize things. And, and it all starts with our technique and the way we hold the sticks, the way we position our hands, the way we move our wrists our stroke style and everything. Uh, if we do that all the same with really great technique, then we're gonna get good really fast and we're gonna improve. And we're gonna have a great time because we're gonna play clean and we're gonna sound awesome. And you're gonna feel yourself getting better and better all the time. And I think that's very, very rewarding. Uh, simple is best. I really believe in a phrase, slow makes fast and fast makes slow. If you go slowly and you do things right, and you make sure that your technique is good, you master timing and rhythm and motion and stroke, then you're gonna accelerate and your improvement will become very fast. If we go fast in the beginning and kind of skip all that stuff, then that's just gonna slow us down. So slow makes fast, fast makes slow. The exercises that I posted on the Google Drive in the music resources page, you'll see a new folder there, drumline warmups. There's a Read Me First page. You can check that out. There's some links there that are very important. A few years ago, several years ago, I put together a book called Hold On To Your Sticks. It's like an entire technique development method for rudimental snare drum. Starts with the simplest exercises, illustrates hand position, stroke style. I have something uh, that you'll get familiar with called stroke development, which is some slow motion stroke exercises to help us move our wrist properly and get control over stick heights, all that kind of stuff. Uh, that's all covered in the book. I also put together a few years ago about 40 plus different, I think 45, something like that, video lessons that go along with the book. Okay. I used to sell it online as a course, but I don't do that anymore. Uh, now I just have it all uh, resting and available on a web page. I provided that link for you. And I'm also including a PDF copy of the book, Hold On To Your Sticks, Mastering the Secrets of World Class Drumming. So you can check that out and you'll see these exercises and forms of this these exercises in the book. But I've also put together a simple exercise warm-up set. There are seven exercises. And I would like everybody to really focus on learning to play these seven exercises as well as you possibly can using really, really great technique. So I've talked enough. I want to go through these exercises and just explain a few things and play them for you so you understand how they work. Uh, I'm going to play each one traditional grip and matched grip so you can see that. So when it comes time to start drumming, you want to make sure you have your thumb on the side of the stick, fingers wrapped around. My book is called Hold On To Your Sticks because I think one of the most common mistakes people make is they don't hold on to their sticks and their grip is way too loose and floppy, fingers hanging out and so forth. So I really want you to think about, be relaxed, but put your hand on the stick and use your wrist. So one of the, one of the fundamental strokes that we actually use in the exercises is what I just call multiple stroke. It's just con like continuous eighth notes and you use your wrist. call that multiple stroke. If you do that on the left hand, or match grip, then you put your hands together and you get alternating single strokes. I call that the first landmark skill of drumming. You got to be able to do that really well, uh, or it's you really can't do anything else. So working on that multiple stroke style and getting so we can put our hands together and play really great 16th notes is very important. So the first exercise is the ever popular eight on a hand, but we're gonna use a smooth, relaxed, multiple stroke wrist stroke. 
We're going to work on stick height consistency, rhythm consistency, use a metronome, and just be as consistent as you can. So this is exercise number one. It's 8, 8, and 16. So we do 8 on the right, 8 on the left, 16 on the right. Then 8 on the left, 8 on the right, 16 on the left, and release on the left hand. So 1, 2, 3, 4. you notice that all my stick heights are the same and my stick height and right and left on the right and left hand are the same and when my stick is not playing it stays still in rest what I call rest position which is two and a half to three inches above the drum head it just stays there and then when it's time to start the other hand you stop one hand in rest position and the other hand takes over so you want to make that control over your hands and your sticks really good Another thing that's very important is sometimes people have low wrists. I want you to make sure that you've got your wrists up a little bit so this part of the stick is slightly higher than this than the beat of the stick. By your hand is higher. It's not lower and it's not flat. It's a little bit angled. Not too much, but a little bit. That gives you a lot of leverage and control. So that's the first exercise. The second exercise is introduces another stroke called tap stroke which is a low grace note style stroke. Sometimes these are called grace notes, but in the context of single strokes, I call them accents and taps, okay? So we're gonna play the accent stroke, stop the stick low, and drop the taps down in, down at this two and a half to three inch height level. Getting control over these low notes is the secret to great technique. This is one of the most important things that we'll do is to be able to stop the stick low and play these low taps. So this first exercise uses that technique. So I would highly recommend just going very slow. In fact, the exercise is triplets and bucks. It's just groupings of threes and groupings of two. But I would recommend that you possibly work on four, that you should work on fours and eights as well. So in, like this, five, six, seven, eight and just work to get those taps down, float down. The upward motion on the accent stroke is very smooth and the stick accelerates into the head. I call that float stroke. It's like the stick floats a little bit and accelerates down. That's my favorite sound effect for that stroke. Okay, it's got to accelerate into the head. That's where your power comes from. And if you hold on to your stick and you don't flip, then your stick around like this, then you can stop the stick low and you can drop the taps in. But the most common mistake is this, not stopping the stick low, and then all these low notes are too high. So you have to stop it, drop it, okay? So work on that, eights and fours, but then the exercise is triplets and bucks, four triplets, four groups of two, and then you do it on the other hand, so it goes, That's the exercise. Awesome single hand exercise. My very first drum teacher told me the most important and best exercise ever written is this one. Single hand triplets. So work on your stick height control because uh, in another exercise later we're gonna put the hands together and we're gonna play two, stick, two hands, alternating strokes with taps and accents. We want those taps to be great. So exercise number three is a 16th note timing exercise. And most you guys have probably played an exercise like this or similar to it. But we play at medium height. All the strokes are the same. And we use this multiple stroke style of motion. Okay, And we're just going to play through the 16th note rhythm grid. The, and there's if four of the rhythms, what I call the 16th note rhythm grid. And all the rhythms are in the book. But we're just going to play the four rhythms that are derived by playing three of the notes. So one E and, one E and is one of the rhythms. The next rhythm is one and a. Then we have one E a. Uh, and the last rhythm is rest. E and a. E and a. 
Okay? So we play four counts of 16th notes, then we play rhythm one. Four counts of 16th notes, rhythm two. And so the first section is called the fours because we do four counts of everything. Then the second part is called the twos because we just do two counts of everything. And the last section of the exercise is called the ones because we play one count of everything. And we play the twos twice, so it's the same length as the fours. And we play the ones four times, so it's the same length as the twos and the fours. So each part of the exercise is the same number of measures. As we reduce it down, we repeat it to make it the same length. So you can follow along in the music. And I'm going to play this exercise once. Sixteenth note time. One E and a two E and a three. Go. Now, that makes for a pretty long exercise. It's also a nice mental exercise to be able to stay focused and concentrate on the transitions between rhythms and uh, the, the fours and the twos and the ones and play it all correctly. But there's a few things happening that I want you to notice, and that is that all my strokes are the same height. They're not changing. Or the, the stick heights are all the place. The stick heights are all the same. That's really, really important. And then uh, the next thing is that is that each hand moves very smoothly. My hand is either doing this or it's doing this. I call this float stroke or multiple stroke. Those are the only two motions in this exercise. So you want to have good control over your hands. During the first two rhythms, the right hand move, moves continuously, and the left hand is doing that other motion. In the third and fourth rhythms, the left hand moves continuously, and the right hand does the float stroke motion. So this is all about great wrist motion, good, strong, solid, consistent sound, good rhythm. Just make it solid and go whatever speed you need to. It does not matter how slow you have to start. What matters is that you do it correctly. Be very methodical about it because every time you do it right, then you're going to be able to build your control and go a little bit faster. So the next exercise, this will be exercise number four, is the same rhythms but no 16th note check pattern measure. We just play the four rhythms, four times each, then two times each, twice, and then one count each, four times. So I'll play that. This is 16th note timing without check pattern. One, two, three, four. exercise is half as long so it doesn't last quite as long and I have to tell you I want you to practice both exercises and learn number three well but when we get those down we're, we're gonna play number four as a drum line uh, for a warm-up a lot we're gonna play that a lot so really learn that one and memorize it and get really comfortable with that and again go as slow as you have to to learn all those rhythmical patterns and work on your stick height control the next exercise goes back to what I call two height drumming, where we have accent height strokes and we have low tap strokes. And this is uh, an accent pattern we call Tom Float accents. Tom Float was a legendary Blue Devil percussion uh, 
instructor and a ranger. He was the director when I marched in the Blue Devils. And this is an exercise he used a lot and used it to fill in different rudiments and so forth. So somewhere along the line, somebody started calling it Tom Float and are calling it Float Accents. And so uh, there you go. That's what it's called. It's a measure of taps and then it goes into the accent pattern. So I'm going to play... I'm going to play this a little bit slower, and I want you to really notice the stick height and accent height control. One E and a two E and a three, four. Make sense? Notice after every accent, I stop the stick low and all the taps are here. So too many times when people play these kind of rhythms, they'll go. They'll let the hand that's not playing an accent, when the right hand plays an accent, the other hand will come up too. And you can't, you have to leave that hand down. That's a good thing to practice. In fact, you just practice this exercise. And then add the left hand accent. Tap, 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 tap. Those tap heights, I would say the drum line with the best taps wins. So, and as you get to know me, we work together, you know, I'm like, those taps are everything. So go work really slow and get control over those taps. Hold on to the sticks. Don't flip on your accents. And if you have those back fingers on your stick, when you bring that accent down, if you just stop your hand, your stick will stop low. Don't let it bounce back up. Stop it low. Drop the taps in. Okay, I'm going to play that one one more time, just a little bit faster. One E and a two E and a three and four and. Okay, cool. The next exercise moves into another area of drumming uh, called uh, double strokes. And these are double strokes, all the same height. So, you know, you're all probably familiar, you play two strokes on a hand, that's called a double stroke. Our goal is to be able to work our double strokes up to a speed where we can play a full speed 30 second note roll. strong, even, and clean, right? So it takes some practice. This is one of the most, um, uh, to learn to play this rudiment well, you have to be pretty committed, and you have to be patient, and just have to keep working on it. And my favorite exercise to begin developing your double strokes is called diddle isolation. So it's a measure of eighth notes. Then we add a double stroke on the right hand to create Measure of eighth notes. Then we diddle on the left. Then measure of eighth notes. Then we do two diddles in a row to create a five stroke roll. Then a measure of eighth notes again. And then uh, an ex two measures, we extend this one and play diddles for two measures. So that's the whole exercise. So if I play that, and now you can go super slow in the beginning with this if you need to, you know. The one thing you do not want to do is play what I call flop diddles, where people just kind of go, they just kind of flop. Let the sticks flop around. I want you to use your wrist and to play each note of the double stroke strong and smooth. So when you're working on this at slower tempos, you want to try to get both notes to be the same stick height and the same volume. So if I play this at kind of a slow speed, but all the way through, it's like this. Sticks, 
strong, strong, even notes. Okay, a little bit faster. One, two, three, four. Now you can use that exercise and continue to gradually go faster, faster and faster and work on your speed. If you haven't really worked much on a double stroke roll this way, you gotta be patient because getting up to full speed uh, typically takes most students um, several, many weeks, sometimes months, sometimes months of diligent practice to get your speed up. But you just gotta keep working on it and pretty soon you'll be able to do it. A little faster. Actually, I did too many. One, two, ready, go. And once you get up to a faster speed, you kind of can make the shift in your mind to playing instead of eighth notes and 16th note doubles. You can think 32nd note check pattern and or excuse me, 16th note check pattern and 32nd note diddle. So it'd be more like one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. Okay. Now, um, everybody is probably might be in different places on developing double stroke rolls or any of these exercises. Please don't worry about where you are and don't spend any time comparing yourself to how you think other people can do this or can and can't do this. Please just don't even worry about that. Just start. Go slow. Think about the stuff I've said with regards to grip and hand position and just start working on your chops. Go slowly and work on your stroke. And my hope is that you can practice these exercises and be pretty comfortable with playing them. Whatever speed, doesn't matter. You could be playing them super slow, that's fine. But you've played them, and you understand what diddle isolation is, and you know what the Tom Float accents exercise is, and you know, you just, you've learned the 16th note timing exercise. So it would be great if you could just play the exercises. Now, there is one more exercise that is... Um, Another way to work on double strokes that I really like, and it's called double beat. So this double beat exercise is pretty syncopated. You can go slowly and use a metronome, but I'll play through it once for you. One, two, ready, go. That's double beat. Then there's one last exercise on here that is a paradiddle diddle exercise, and it covers. Um, it uses diddles, but the diddles are down at the at a tap height. So the first measure is like exercise number two, but we're going to play double strokes in the tap height. So instead of just taps like this and accents, we're going to do this. This is, that's the hand motion for a paradiddle diddle. That's what each hand does. So that's a great hand motion to practice. So the, the rudiment paradiddle diddle, paradiddle diddle, paradiddle diddle, we're breaking this down. So I'm going to play this very slow and you can see the different components of it. If you can start to learn how to play accented paradiddle diddles and accented paradiddles, which is the last measure of the exercise, last two measures of the exercise, then you're on your way to developing two heights drumming at a little more advanced level. So I'm going to play this super, super slow.
Now you may even need to go slower than that. If you have to practice your paradiddles at this speed, then fine. If you have to start here, whatever it takes, go slowly and get control over the rhythm and the stick height. That's the most important thing. If you do that correctly, speed will come. I'm not worried about speed. I'm worried about technique because that will give you the ability to go faster. If I play the exercise just a little bit faster so you can get a fill for the whole thing. One, two, three, four. There you go. And then once you can play it on the right hand, then you also want to practice playing it off the left hand, which is a really great thing too. Um, so take your time, go slow, work through these exercises. If you are really into this and you want to uh, dig deeper, you can go to the, the link, uh, Hold On To Your Sticks website, where all of the videos that go along with my book are located. And you can see all those videos there, and you I mean, you can pick and choose, but you could start at the beginning. The first few, there's a gri there's one on grip and hand position and uh, wrist motion, and then uh, wrist motion, and then there's um, several that go through these four slow motion stroke sequences: shadow stroke, uh, snap stroke, switch stroke, and then float stroke and the multiple stroke, and then. Uh, <clears throat> later tap stroke when you start to play taps and accents but basically there's there's three main rudiments in the world of drumming there's single strokes and you can play single strokes one height just alternating patterns all one stick height then there's a subcategory single strokes two heights where you can still play alternating singles but we play two different heights that's the taps and accents. And when you combine your hands doing that motion, you can play all kinds of awesome accent patterns. That is super important in developing your ability to go to higher levels. Then the next category is double strokes. This all came from this article I read years ago um, by a famous jazz drummer, uh, Philly Joe Jones. And he said, you know, there are really only three rudiments in the world of drumming. There's single stroke roll, double stroke roll, and flam. And everything else is built on those. And I thought, you know, he's right. So I organized the exercises that way. But those are the first single stroke. There's two subcategories in each. The next category, rudiment, double stroke roll. Uh, you can play double strokes one height. Like diddle isolation. Or you can play them two heights. Um, the next category of drumming is double strokes with two heights. And that would be like paradiddles fall in that category. Uh, accented rolls. Uh, I'll fall in that category. And then the last category of drumming is flams. And um, you play a grace note and an accent, a tap stroke and an accent stroke together. Make a flam. You're probably all familiar with flams. You can play single alternating flams. And then there's several flam rudiments, and there's basically two categories of flam rudiments. Those that are very strict taps and accents, like flam accents. You can see the accents and the taps. Flam paradiddles. And then there's another type of rudiment, which is a more bounced uh, legato rudiment, like flam taps. Excuse me. Or Swiss triplets. Um, and then there's some more flam rudiments that use a little bit more sophisticated motion, inverted flam taps and patty flaw flaws and stuff like that. I won't go into those there. So that's 
um, the big picture of drumming. And I want to take you through the whole thing, and I want you to develop great chops and just love being a really fine drummer. And the way to do that is to start slow, start at the beginning, and develop your technique properly. So start at the beginning. If you have the time to go through some of those other videos, that would be great. At least this video you've got, and you can start to learn these first seven exercises. Now, exercise six and seven are a little more advanced, and I'm not as concerned about those. But the first five exercises, 8816, bucks and triplets, 16th note tiny, with and without check pattern, and then uh, tom float, and then diddle isolation. So I kind of, in my mind, 16th note time and I combined together in, in one. Actually, in the, in the music, it's those first six exercises. But we'll end up doing exercise number four the most, the check pattern 16th, or no check pattern 16th note time. So start to learn those five exercises and get comfortable with those, and I'll be glad to help you. If you want to get uh, on a Zoom or FaceTime call with me and play a little for me and let me help you, I'm so happy to do that. But I'm just excited to get started and to start working with you, the first SVU drumline. Here we go. So enjoy the rest of your summer, and I'll be in touch. Okay, so the other video, I talked through all kinds of details, and I did everything matched grip. And this video is going to be as short as I can possibly make it, but I just want to talk a little bit about traditional grip. Uh, those of you who I've talked to about possibly playing snare, or anybody who wants to learn traditional grip and has their sights on playing snare at some point, uh, our snare line is going to play traditional grip. It's awesome. It's cool. It's legit. All, all the drum lines, great drum lines do it, and it's so much fun. So we're going to do it. Right hand is obviously the same. Traditional grip. Let me just explain this grip real quick. So you take your hand, put it like this, kind of like you're going to reach out and shake somebody's hand. Put the, the stick in this webbed part between your thumb and first finger. Then you rest the stick just at the base of this fingernail, right there is where you put that stick. So these are kind of two counterpoints. Then your first and second finger roll over the top. Your thumb goes on this first knuckle joint. And you want your thumb to be down kind of like ski slope. You don't want your thumb to be up like that. These two fingers mirror each other. They kind of go together and then separate at the end a little bit. Right there, you can see that separation. And then your other two fingers mirror each other and just stick together. In the beginning, if you're doing this for the first time, this stick finger, your last finger, little finger might keep falling off and whatever. Don't worry about it. Just keep putting it back there and it'll stay sooner or later. If you really get annoyed, you could put a Band-Aid or a piece of tape around both fingers to keep them together. You'll probably get a blister right here. You might have to put a Band-Aid on there for a while. So that's the grip. The hand position, you're, you, if you just drop your arm down to your side and then bend your elbow comfortably, put it up in the center of the head, there's the grip. Okay. Um, you should be able to put your stick across like this. Okay. And then... You rotate, I, you could take the stick and put it in your palm and face it away from your palm. So when you're in rest position, your palm would be pointing to the wall, parallel to the ground. As you lift your hand up, then your palm would be facing towards the ceiling. So that's the basic motion. It's a, everything lifts up, kind of like a paddle. It's not like this, don't let your hand go down or even rotate in place. Everything lifts upward a little bit. It's like this part of your hand come up to the same level as this part of your hand. So those, this point and this point are now parallel to each other, and then it comes back down. Okay, So that's the motion. So you can just practice that motion. You come back, you're here. The most common mistake is to roll your hand over like this. Please don't, don't do that. That that's, doesn't work. you got to get this rotation. You also got to keep your thumb and first finger in contact with each other on top of the stick. Every time I stop, I could do that with my stick. This is on top, because that's where your power comes from, is this contact moment. Boom! That's where it, this brings the stick into the head, your thumb and first finger. So, I'm just going to play the exercises. So, 8 on, 8, 8, 16, 2, ready, and...
Okay, number two. Notice those taps. Notice how I'm stopping the stick low, dropping it in. Uh, exercise number three, long exercise with check pattern. You can see the other video for, for that. I'm gonna play number four, the tap, sent, or excuse me, 16th note timing without check pattern. One more. We have the tap accent exercise uh, accent patterns uh, tom float one two three four and again you go as slow as you need to if you need to start here or here doesn't matter Go slow, do it correctly. Um, and then diddle isolation. Okay, and double beat. Exercise. There you go. So you can work through those. Good luck. I'll be in touch.